Good morning and welcome to the Daily Download. I'm your host, Dr. Devara Pulley. So glad to be with you on a Thursday morning. Happy Thursday, everyone. How are you feeling on a Thursday morning? Welcome to the Daily Download and welcome to the kingdom of God. What I love about God's kingdom is that God's kingdom is already inside of us. It's inside of me. It's inside of you. It's inside of all of us just waiting to come into expression. So we call people from the north from the South, from the East and from the West. And we say, come on and be a part of God's kingdom. What I love about God's kingdom is that God's kingdom is for everybody. No matter your age, your race or your gender, you are welcome in God's kingdom. It doesn't matter your socioeconomic status, your educational level or your orientation. You are welcome in God's kingdom. Regardless of your um, family dynamic, credit history or criminal background, you are welcome in God's kingdom. And guess what? We all have challenges. So no matter your physical, mental, or emotional challenges, you are welcome in God's kingdom. So we invite you to tag someone in this post and share it on your page and let them know that you're watching the daily download live with Dr. Darara Pulley and invite them to watch it live with you. Good morning, Shepherd Mother. Good morning, Carol Hasbrook. Good morning, Bishop Hector. Good morning, Christ Bootsy. How y'all feeling on a Thursday morning? I invite you to tag someone in this post and share it on your page and let them know that you're watching the daily download. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart once you've done so. Good morning, Dr. Lisa Maya. Good morning, Cuzzo. Janelle, how y'all feeling? Happy Thursday, everyone. Good morning, Wanda. Good morning, Tiny. Good morning, Najida. Good morning, Nayron. Good morning, Connie. Good morning, Winifred. Happy Thursday. How y'all feeling on a Thursday morning? Good morning, Overseer Desnick Jackson. Overseer Desnick. Jackie. Good morning, Bishop Stacy Latimer. How y'all feeling on a Thursday morning? Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you share it on your page. Good morning, Elder Larry Robinson, Brother Sean Holmes. Welcome again to the Daily Download. Happy Thursday, everyone. Good morning, Celeste Johnson, Keisha Johnson, Gina Johnson, Asalita Johnson, Vivian Johnson, Vivian Miller. Good morning and welcome again to the Daily Download download. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you share it on your page. Good morning, Mother Dorothy Gallup, Mother Linda Johnson. How y'all feeling on a Thursday morning? Happy Thursday, everyone. Good morning, Deborah Ruff and Dorsey. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning, Queen and Zynga. How y'all feeling? Happy Thursday, everyone. So glad to be with you on a Thursday morning. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you share it on your page. Good morning, April. Good morning, Avis. Good morning, Andrea. Good morning, Althea. Good morning, Alvita. Welcome to the Daily Download. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you share it on your page. Good morning, Paulette Lucas. Good morning, Pat Payne. Good morning, Patricia Supernat. So glad to be with you on a Thursday morning. Good morning, Dr. Robin. How you feeling? Welcome again to the Daily Download. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you share it on your page. Good morning, Elder Katrina. Good morning, Jamel. Good morning, Kiana. Good morning, Tam J. Good morning, Tammy. Welcome to the Daily Download. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. Once you tag someone in this post and once you share it on your page. Good morning, Bishop Vince Munden, Elder Monita Munden. Bishop Paulette Zimmerman, Bishop Samuel Zimmerman, how y'all feeling on a Thursday morning? Welcome again to the Daily Download. I'm your host, Dr. Darara Pulley, the spiritual leader of today's church, Tampa Bay, and the presiding prelate of the Church of the Everlasting Kingdom. And this is the Daily Download, where the Lord daily loads us with benefits. And I'm telling you, the day is already loaded. It's already jammed. It's already packed with the lessons and the blessings of God. And my heart and my mind are open and ready to receive all the good that God has for me. And I am praying with you today that your heart and your mind are open and receptive to divine unlimited ideas. Let's take a break from texting and chatting and talking and greeting one another and center ourselves in the presence of God and take a deep conscious cleansing breath. Hold it and release. 
Breathe in again. Hold it and let it go. Breathe in one more time. Hold it and release. There is a multi-million dollar life-changing word in my mind, in my mouth, and in my hands. It is changing millions of lives and impacting thousands of communities for the good. It is bringing millions of dollars to me, to my family, and to all those who are connected to me. God promised me the increase of the five, the 50, the 500, the 5,000, and the miracle buildings. And I believe it and I receive it today. It is in the name and through the power and in the consciousness of Christ Jesus that it is so. And so it is. And so I let it be. Amen and amen. I shared with you this morning one of my personal prayers, amen, that helped remind me of the prosperity that God has promised me. What prayer are you praying? that reminds you of the overflow, the increase, the abundance, the more than enough that God has promised you. Good morning, Lenore. Good morning, Priscilla. What prayer are you praying? Good morning, Dr. Dre. Good morning, Donna Drain. Good morning, Denise. That reminds you of the promises of God, the abundance that is available to you. Amen. That's when when I pray. So you craft one that works for you. Amen. We're still in the book, Kingdom Principles for Living the Divine Life. And we're on day number 35, page number 54. And our subject for today is you still have a cake to make. Can I say that? You still have a cake to make it. We're coming from 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse number 11 from the Kingdom Study Bible. It says, as she was going to get it, he called. And bring me, please, a slice of cake. First Kings 17 and 11 from the Kingdom Study Bible. And my subject for today is you still have a cake to make. Many times people make excuses of why they are not able to do what it is that God has called them to do. And once I get the money, then I'm going to do this. Once I am in a better financial position, then I'm going to tithe. Once I'm in a better uh, financial state, then I'm going to give my offerings. Once I'm in a better uh, money place, then I'm going to be able to help those who are in need. And that people put off their good thinking that once the money comes, that then they're going to do all these great and wonderful things. But in the current financial condition that you are in, you still have a cake to make. With all the bills you have right now, you still have a cake to make. With all the the, uh, creditors, you still have a cake to make. With the credit score, you in the midst of all the financial challenges that you are facing, you still have a cake to make. Let's make it personal. Put in the chat line, I still have a cake to make. (laughs) I still have a cake to make. I have a cake to bake. I still have a cake to make in the midst of all the challenges. I still have a cake to make. Amen. Years and years ago, I preached this message and we had a cake service and people brought in all these different kinds of cakes. I see Elder Diane. I'm sure she remembers that. Amen. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. If you was there back in the day where we had a cake service and it was a prosperity consciousness where everybody brought different cakes and different kinds of cakes. And they shared the process of making and baking that particular cake to put us in the mindset of this widow of Zarephath. Because remember, the brook is dried up. The raven has stopped bringing cooked flesh, amen, in the morning and in the evening. And so now God has sent him to Zarephath and made arrangements with a widow there. And so the widow was fetching sticks and um, he's there. The prophet, the man of God is saying, (coughs) I'm a little thirsty. Um, Can you get me some water? And so out of respect, she doesn't know him, you know, out of respect, out of honor, she goes and gets the water. And so while she's getting the water, he says, and why are you at it? Bring me a little, a little piece of cake. Their cake was bread, what we call bread. Um, They called it cake. Amen. Bring me a slice of that cake. 
bring me a piece of bread. I, I need a little, I need a little something for the stomach's sake. Bring me a piece of bread. And so her response was, wait a minute, I don't have a lot. You know, I, I'm just going to, you know, make this cake and eat it. And me and my son, we're going to die. This is our last meal. This is our last supper. And, and he invited her to still make a cake, that you still have a cake to make in the midst of all the challenges. There's still a call on your life. There is still purpose for you in the midst of all the challenges. You still have a call. Amen. If you haven't already done so, put that in the chat line. I still have a cake to make. Yes, all this stuff is going on. You know, her husband has transitioned. She's got bills. She's got debt. She's got this child to take care of. And she still has a cake to make. You still are responsible to be, do, and have what it is that God promised you. You still have a cake to make. You still have a cake to bake. All right? I still have one. Amen. It seems like people are pulling on you here and there. You still have a cake to make. Time out for excuses. Excuses do not excuse. Explanations do not explain. You still have a cake to make. You still have a calling to fulfill and a God to glorify. You still have a cake to make. Pull point number one. You got the way to make it. You got the fire. God has provided the fire. If you provide the fire, I'll provide the sacrifice. She had the two sticks, which means that she had the ability to heat it, to bake it. She had the fire. God has already made a way. God has already opened the door. Use the resources that you have. Instead of complaining about what you don't have, use the resources that you have. She had the fire. She had a way to make the cake. Instead of focus on what you don't have in order to get to a place of abundance, know that God has already provided. God has already provided the fire, the way for you to make the cake. You still have a cake to bake. Pulley point number two, she also had the ingredients. She had a little oil in a cruise. She had a little meal in a barrel. She had the ingredients. You still got a cake to make, even though it appears to be little. Little becomes much when you place it in the Father's hands. Amen. You have, God has provided everything you need to make this cake. God has given you all the resources that you need, but because you're thinking that it's small, that it's little, that it's insufficient, that it's not enough, you're not making the cake. But use the fire that God has given you. Use the ingredients. You got the ingredients. You got what it takes to be successful. You have what it takes to be prosperous. You have what it takes to succeed. God has already given you the fire. You got two sticks, rub them together. God has already given you the ingredients. You have the oil and you have the meal in the barrel. Stop looking at it as insufficient and say, I'm going to go ahead and make this cake. And if I'm in the present moment doing what it is that God has told me to do, using the resources that God has already given me, then when I need more, I have more. Everything I need, I have. If I don't have it now, I don't need it now. But when I need it, I will have it. Good morning, Brenda Anderson. Good morning, uh, Arlene Gresham. Pulley point number three. And she had the time. She had the time. You got the time. What are you doing with the time God has given you? Are you murmuring and complaining? Or are you using that time to make the cake? Make the cake, anime. Eat the cake, anime. Eat the cake. Use the time that God has given you to be productive, to be effective, to be efficient, to operate in excellence. You still got a cake to make. I don't need to hear the excuse. Well, you know this hurt and you know the doctor said you, you still got a class to attend. You still got a message to preach. You still got a book to write. You still got a song to sing. You still have a cake to make in the midst of all oh, what well, they said this and they talking about me and this and that. You still have a cake to make. You still have a conference to attend. Amen. You still got a convocation to be a part of. You still have a cake to make. You still got a business to run. You still have a local assembly ministry to lead. Come on. You still have a cake to make. Don't allow the circumstances, the seeming problems to stop you from making your cake. Make your cake. Fulfill the purpose of God for your life. 
Good morning again, and welcome to The Daily Download. I'm your host, Dr. Deverar R. Pulley. If this is your first time watching The Daily Download, like, follow, and share the Dr. Deverar R. Pulley page so that you can get notifications of when we're on Facebook Live. If you're one of our regular Kingdom Citizen Students of Truth, you know what time it is. It's time to press that share button, invite a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, a classmate, a church member, and let them know that you're watching The Daily Download Live with Dr. Deverar R. Pulley and invite them to to watch it live with you. Then give me a thumbs up, a high five, a heart once you have done so. We're inviting you, amen, like us, to use every media resource available to help this, help us get out this kingdom message. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok. We got reels. We got podcasts. We got blogs. We're on radio stations. We're in newspapers. We're using every media resource. And if you're on those, find us, like us, follow us, share us, amen, friend us, <laughs> because the big vision is Kingdom Television 24-7, 365. Yes, we're inviting you today directly after the daily download. We have prayer with Elder Katrina Johnson Smith. Amen. The Power and Praise prayer line and that dialing information is on your screen. Yes, today at 745, one of my favorite things in social media is Love Alive in the morning on the LAISP Facebook page with Bishop Stacy Latimer and his ministerial staff. Yesterday, we had the Midday Moment at 1230 with Dr. Davina Jones. And tonight, 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 tonight. Yes, tonight, we have Thursday Night Conversation with Overseer Desmond, Tyrell D. Moore. So you got a whole lot of kingdom going on, and you can get as much kingdom as you desire to be a part of it. Yes, uh, we need to check that time. I'm not sure that they're still offering that class. So let's remove both of those classes with Bishop Joshua and make sure and confirm with him the days and times to make sure that we have the accurate information. All right. But let me tell you what I do know is happening. Increased 2023 conference and holy convocation that is happening July the 12th through the 16th right here in Tampa in the city of champions. Yes. You can go to cotechincrease.org. And today is June 15th. You know how you have April 15th. Where's the deadline to get your taxes in? Well, it's April 15th. And this is the deadline for you to get your if you've been on a payment plan for convocation and you haven't yet fully registered. Today is the day. Now is your time. This is your hour and this is your season to get in those registration uh, for Increase 2023 Conference and Holy Convocation. If you're going to be in the Philadelphia area, I'll be ministering at the New Birth Fellowship Alliance uh, Convocation in Philadelphia with Bishop Tito Saunders this Friday at 12 noon at the Hilton uh, Philadelphia Airport. So join us uh, tomorrow at 12 noon in Philadelphia. If you're in the Baltimore, Washington, Virginia area, yes, on a Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m., I'll be preaching for Father's Day at Kingdom Covenant Ministries and Network uh, with Bishop Abenard Hector this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. So it's a lot of opportunities for us to be able to connect. And I look forward to you, my daily download family, supporting us in these endeavors. Yes, we are doing the Kingdom Study Bible where we're putting the kingdom perfection, which is love, the kingdom process, which is balance, the kingdom principles, which are divinity, the kingdom practices, which are prayer, and the kingdom promises, which are prosperity with gender neutral language, all in the kingdom study Bible. And we are developing this Bible as we speak. Our goal is to have the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible available at Increase 2023. And let me tell you, we're working it out. We get it done. Amen. All right. So we are looking at the book of Jeremiah. And we believe that if you just read a chapter a day, it can help keep sickness, chaos, and confusion. It can help keep poverty, lack, and limitation away. So in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 35 and verse number 10. And our subject for the day is never have I ever. <laughs> Never have I ever. And many times people say this from a place of judge. Oh, I've never done that. Oh, I would never do anything like that. Oh, I never. Well, I never. You know, never have I ever. It's a game that they play. Amen. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. Give me a heart. If you heard of that game, if you played that game, never have I ever. Jeremiah 35 and 10. And so there were a group of people that were in Israel that had kind of separated themselves. 
and started their own little clique, started their own clan. All right, Jeremiah 35 and 10, it says, we have lived in tents and have fully obeyed everything. Our forefather, Johanna, jo Johananab, commanded us, Jeremiah chapter 35 and verse number 10. And so the, have you ever been in a situation where there are cliques? Maybe you were in school and there were a group of girls that thought they were better than everybody else, or maybe they were a group of intellects or jocks that thought they were better than all the other boys, or maybe you got people in the church that think they're better than everybody else, or people on your job that form a certain clique, and they say, never have I ever. And so these people um, that were a part of this group, that they were following their forefather, they said, we, we, we don't do certain things. Ne never have I ever. We've never done this. Pulling point number one. They said, never have I ever um, drank wine. Never have I ever. I've never been drunk. I've never, ever drunk wine. Now, you know you can't say never have I ever. <laughs> I remember watching that episode, I believe it was on the Jeffersons, where uh, Flo was dating this preacher, and she was getting ready to drink some wine, and he said, lips that touch wine shall never touch mine. That's some people, if you're not supposed to drink, don't drink. If you can't drink because you're in recovery, don't drink, but don't judge other people that do drink. They said, never have we ever drank wine. Never have I ever been drunk. Maybe you weren't high off of wine. Maybe you were high off of weed. Maybe you were high off of your own lust. Maybe you were high off of pride. But none of us. It was Sanford and Son. Oh, my God. They must have had that same, you know, Norman Lear wrote a lot of that. So it must have Aunt Esther. They said it was Aunt Esther. Okay. All right. Um, I remember it was uh, Florence on the Jefferson. You know, Norman Lear had the same storyline with a couple of them shows. And so none of us in a place of judgment to be able to judge anybody else. Maybe you were drunk on one thing and maybe somebody else was drunk on something else. But we're all in recovery and we're all recovering from something. We have Recovery Sunday every fourth Sunday in our church and people are recovering from different things. Maybe you never drank wine, but maybe you smoked. Maybe you didn't smoke, but maybe you played the lottery. Amen. We all have something, but they thought they were better. Never have I ever drank wine. Pulling point number two. They said, never have I ever planted vineyards. You know, our hands are too good. You know, like some people think that they're too good to work menial jobs, to do menial tasks. Never have I ever planted a vineyard, a vineyard. Never have I ever got my hands dirty. I remember there was a brother in our church. Uh, this was way back in the days of uh, Kotech where we were a local assembly and we were setting up chairs in the gym. We were in um, um, Halstead Academy and there was a, a young man that came to the church who shall remain nameless. And we were setting up chairs and breaking down and as a spiritual leader. I was setting up chairs and breaking down because we had to set up and break down. He says, I'm a minister. I don't, I don't set up and break down chairs. I said, minister means to serve. How are you going to be a minister and you too good to say, clean the toilet, clean the bed? Never have I ever. That's that consciousness of pride. Never have I ever. Have we ever planted vineyards? That there's nothing too big or nothing too small for you to do. Sometimes you got to get your hands dirty. And especially when you're developing a business, a ministry, a local assembly, as a spiritual leader, you don't have people to delegate things to. So you got to do it because it's got to be done until you get you some deacons, <laughs> until you get some elders. And then even with that, just for good morale sometimes, you need to everybody put your shoulder to the wheel and let's plant these vineyards. But some people never have I ever planted a vineyard. Pulley point number three. Never have we ever lived in houses. We've always lived in tents because we don't know how the spirit is going to lead us and guide us. Never have we built such structured physical dwelling places because God, you know, has us in tents. And some people, they make big deals out of what they don't have as if your poverty is a badge of holiness as if your lack and limitation is a bad, they said, never have we ever lived in houses. We've only lived in tents. And so they were bragging about all the things they had never done. And so the people are being carried off to Babylon and they're not leaving. They're in the fortified cities. And so we're not going anywhere. 
Never have we ever drank wine. Never have we ever um, lived in tents. Never have we ever planted vineyards. We're not going anywhere. They thought they were better than everybody else. And you know what Jeremiah said? He said, never have you ever obeyed God. You worship the idols just like everybody else. You worship the false gods just like everybody else. You made the graven images just like everybody else. So guess what? You're going into Babylonian captivity just like everybody else. He said, come on with this never have I ever. None of us. Maybe your stuff ain't my stuff and my stuff ain't your stuff, but we all got stuff. And so they all were going into Babylonian captivity because they all had not followed God's laws and precepts and commandments. Come out of the seat of judgment. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the same measure you meet, it will be measured again unto you. There's no pride in being poor. Well, I don't have a car, I catch the bus. I don't have a house. I just go from house to house and from place to place like Jesus. But he said, bigger than whether or not you drink wine is do you obey God? Bigger than whether or not you plant vineyards, do you obey God? Bigger than whether you live in a house or in a tent, do you do what God has called you to do? He said, because this nation as a collective is going into Babylonian captivity and you can fight Babylon and fight the consequences for your actions, but we all, reap what we sow. None of us are exempt from the kingdom principle of sowing and reaping. We all have done stuff. And the Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. When you sit in a seat of judgment of others' people, you are talking about yourself because we're all one. And whatever you do to other people, it boomerangs. It comes back to you. So none of us are in a position to be able to judge, talk about anybody else. Never have I ever. Come on, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God and God will exalt you in due time. I love you so much, God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of the daily download. If you've been blessed by today's message, sow a seed, meet a need, boost this post because you still got a cake to make and do bake that cake in humility as opposed to talking about what you haven't done. What about the stuff you did do that you didn't get caught for, that God's grace and mercy covered you? What about all the stuff that you did do that in the dark that has yet to come to the light? What about all the bones that have been buried and all the skeletons in your closet? Be transparent and tell the truth. We stop talking about never have I ever. You're not in a position to judge anybody. Don't compare yourself to Jesus is the standard rule of measurement. Jesus is our way shower. And so we all got character flaws. We all got stuff that we're working on to be more and more like Jesus. I love you so much. God bless you. If you've been blessed by today's message, sow a seed, meet a need, boost this post, tag someone this post and share it on your page. Let me tell you, there's a place in consciousness where good keeps happening to you. Miracle signs and wonders keep happening. Open doors everywhere. It keeps happening for me. I love you so much. God bless you. It's time for prayer with Elder Katrina Johnson Smith. Have a positive and productive day. Mm -hmm.